Hi, I'm a pharmacist and I want to share my health and wellness tips with you. Welcome to Track MTM. About a month ago, I uploaded a video about my opinion on Tati Halo Beauty Dietary Supplements. It got pretty popular very quickly and it also got tons of backlash, unfortunately. Um, honestly, it doesn't matter to me if my videos get tons of view or no view at all. I'm not here to become famous. As a pharmacist, I just care about sharing my knowledge with the public and people should really be aware of what they're putting inside their bodies. So my motto is less is always more when it comes to medication. I make these videos to help you stay informed and to really protect your best interests. And I tell my patients all the time, even if it's not something you want to hear, these are the things that you should know before you take something. And by law, any drug, supplement, vitamin, over-the-counter product is considered a dangerous substance. Yes, by law, it's considered a dangerous substance. So some people think of prescription medications are considered as a dangerous drug. Well, that's not true at all because vitamins and supplements, although they're in a different category, they're, they still come with you know side effects and interactions. So before we dive into this, now I use Natural Medicine Comprehensive Database as a resource for all the information that I'm going to be presenting to you. It provides evidence-based, unbiased, scientific, and clinical information often utilized by a lot of healthcare professionals, so it's a legit resource. There are 21 ingredients total on the list. Now it took me almost really a whole month to gather all the information and film this for you. So get comfortable because we're going to be here for a very long time to unravel each and every single one of the ingredient and the possible drug interactions, as promised. Please stay until the end because I will tell you what's also wrong with this formula and some of the questionable combinations of the ingredients. I will discuss in five different categories in details the name of the ingredient, the mechanism of action or the science behind it, the health benefits, the side effects, and the main drug interactions that you should know. So let's get started. The first one is vitamin C, also known as ascorbic acid. Now, first of all, it's water soluble. So it helps with the formation of collagen and peptide synthesis. Now the health benefits, it can help with scurvy. It protects your immune system, of course. So if you have a cold or a flu, wound healing, cardiovascular health, and cancer prevention. As for side effects, it can cause the normal thing like nausea, diarrhea, and even stomach cramps as well. So for the interactions, don't take this if you have kidney stones or renal failure. Um, large dose of vitamin C actually can induce copper deficiency as well, and it reduces the effectiveness of some chemo drugs. Now, the effect of vitamin C is reduced by glutathione, which is interesting because this is one of the ingredients listed in the supplement itself. And it because of the prooxidant cytotoxic effect that can decrease the effect of vitamin C. Vitamin D3. Now I actually have a video on this about vitamin D, how it's a sunshine vitamin and all that. So first of all, it's fat soluble. It regulates the calcium and the phosphate inside your body. For health benefits, it, of course it can help with you know increasing the bone density and prevents fat fracture. So those of you who are prone to osteoporosis or osteoarthritis, that might be a good option. As for side effects, it has to do with um, renal, so basically your kidney, and some of the stomach issues, and it can increase, of course, the calcium levels. Now for the drug interactions, so vitamin D is not recommended for those of you who have kidney stones or disorders of any kind of calcium metabolism. It increases the level of aluminum 
and it decreases the blood levels of cholesterol. For example, like cholesterol medication, atorvastatin, also known as Lipitor, thiazine or diuretics medication like hydrochlorothiazide, it can increase the calcium level. Next one is very interesting. It's called digoxin. It's a heart medication and it's considered a dirty drug. Now, what do I mean by that? It's dirty because it has a very narrow therapeutic index. So it doesn't play nice with each other or with other medications, that is. It can increase your calcium to dangerous levels if it's not monitored. So imagine if it's a narrow therapeutic index, right? So you, you only have a small window of framework to work with. So if you go above that range, it can cause toxicity very easily. If you go below that range, then what's the point of taking the medication? It's not going to be effective. So you only have this window to aim where it should be. So that's digoxin and that's why you really got to be careful. So those of you out there on digoxin, Please check with your pharmacist or doctor before doing anything, before taking anything, okay? <laughs> Alrighty. So also with deltiazem or verapamil, those are heart medications. Those can also spike your calcium level. Alrighty, moving on to the next one, vitamin B1, also known as thiamine. So it's necessary for carbohydrate metabolism. It's involved in like neuromuscular transmission as well for health benefits. Of course, if you have malabsorption or deficiency of thiamine, that can be a good addition. So like if you're an alcoholic, you're gonna be deficient in thiamine. If you're a type two diabetic patient, of course. And then it also helps with cataracts. Generally, there are not really any listed side effects. It's pretty well tolerated, so that's good news. As for drug interactions, before we dive into that, let's kind of brush on like if you're a coffee or tea lover, like I am, I love tea. So in tea, it has polyphenols, such as like tannins, so it can react with thiamine. It, convert, uh, it can convert into like an unabsorbable inactive form in that case. Let's dive into the drug interaction now. The horsetail. It contains thiaminase light compound that can actually destroy thiamine. And guess what? Horsetail is listed as one of the ingredients again in this formula. So, <laughs> it's kind of questionable, don't you think, with all the combinations? The next category is seafood. So like raw freshwater fish that you consume with sushi and shellfish that contain thiaminase enzymes that can destroy again thiamine itself. And the enzymes are destroyed by, of course, cooking. So if you consume cooked fish, it should be fine. But you know, even with you consume raw fish, like you have to consume a mass amount or like a large quantity for it to be any kind of negative effects on you really. So don't be worried. <laughs> Therefore, consumption of cooked seafood does not affect thiamine levels. Good news. Vitamin B2, also known as riboflavin. Now it's required for like tissue respiration, Deficiency often is seen in populations with infections like HIV or AIDS or alcoholics or those who have liver disease. For health benefits, it can help with cataracts and migraine. At high doses, of course, vitamin B2 can cause diarrhea, polyuria, and actually your urine or your pee will become kind of yellow-orange um, color, has a bit of discoloration on your pee. Drug interactions. Now, if you take vitamin B2 or riboflavin with, let's say, tetracycline antibiotics, that can decrease the effects of these antibiotics. So when you take an antibiotic, basically you have an infection that you want to get rid of. So it's not good if it decreases the infectiveness of your antibiotic, you won't you know, actually get well sooner. 
So you, of course you want to maximize your antibiotics effectiveness. For an example, what do I mean by tetracycline antibiotics like doxycycline or vipromycin or minocycline, also known as minocin. Okay, next we have vitamin B6, also known as peridoxine. Now it's involved in amino acid metabolism, carbohydrate and lipid metabolism as well. Health benefits. It can help with age-related macular degeneration, kidney stone, morning sickness in pregnant women, like nausea and vomiting, and premenstrual syndrome, or now also known as PMS. As for side effects, the usual nausea and vomiting, abdominal, <laughs> abdominal pain, loss of appetite, kind of a headache, and it also linked to some reports of like skin and other allergic reaction. That's not confirmed yet though. Breast soreness or enlargement and photosensitivity. What do I mean by that? So if you go out in the sun, the, the sun can actually make you kind of sensitive and that can cause, you know, maybe induce other side effects as well. Moving on to the drug interactions. So vitamin B6 can decrease the serum folic acid concentration. And meodorone, it has interaction with that. It can increase your photosensitivity. Again, imiodarone is also another drug that doesn't play well with others, so got to be careful with that. Blood pressure medication. Because it can decrease your systolic blood pressure, uh, and it's dangerous because if your blood pressure goes too low, you can get like dizzy and lightheadedness, and for elders, uh, the seniors, patient population, they can easily faint and then that can cause more problems like fractures and falls and you know, all that bad stuff. So with blood pressure, blood pressure medication like Captopril or Capotin, Analapril, Vasotec, Losartan, Cozar, Emlodipine or Norvasc, and Hydrochlorothiazide. Biotin. Now that is a very popular supplement to be honest with you. So it's basically the science behind it. It's stored in the mitochondria. It's synthesized by animals in the intestinal microflora. So it can help with, of course, you know this, hair loss, brittle nails, and also it can help with diabetic neuropathy, mild depression, and muscle cramps. Again, it's pretty well tolerated so it there's no documented side effects. And for the drug interaction, ready? Alpha lipoic acid, which is one of the ingredients listed again in this formula. It competitively inhibits the, the overall absorption of biotin. However, her website's information says otherwise. So be careful with that. So what do I mean by competitively inhibition or inhibits each other's absorption? Think about it, if you have one single filter, right? You have biotin over here, alpha lipoic acid over here. They're competing with each other to go down the same funnel. So of course the absorption of each one is gonna be reduced because they're only a fraction of it gets through that filter that you want. So let's say if you are only consuming biotin, then biotin itself can just go down the funnel and it gets absorbed. Again, the same thing with lipoic acid. If it's just by itself, then it can go down, get absorbed, no problem. But because they're competing with each other, overall absorption will be decreased. Okay, next one, zinc. Zinc is basically a trace element. It's a cofactor in many biological processes and like gene expression as well, like DNA, RNA, and protein synthesis. For health benefits, it can actually help with like acne, diarrhea, age-related macular degeneration, so your eye, attention deficit hyperactive disorder or ADHD, burns, the common code, depression, diaper rash, diabetic foot ulcers, gingivitis, herpes, muscle cramps, osteoporosis, pneumonia, sickle cells, and warts. 
Now, you gotta be careful because not all of these benefits are confirmed yet. So, for the side effects, nausea, vomiting, and especially the metallic taste in your mouth. Yeah, you can actually taste that with zinc. Drug interaction. Oh boy. So, first off, let's start with coffee. It can reduce the um, zinc absorption. For calcium as well, it can reduce zinc absorption. A large amount of zinc really can also decrease like copper retention and again, competitively inhibits the absorption. However, this is not the case in the zinc formula in this supplement because the dosage is not high enough. And there are studies that can go up to like 150 milligram per day. But again, that's not the case with this supplement. For diabetic population, dose adjustments are necessary because it might lower the glucose level. If you're taking medications like glimipiride, glinase, metformin, actose, avandia, right? So if you're on those medications, it's already gonna lower your blood sugar. You don't want your blood sugar to get too low because they can cause problems again. And then the next one is quinolones antibiotics. For an example, like ciprofloxacin or cipro, levofloxacin or levoquin, moxifloxacin or avalox. Now, of course you want to take Again, maximize your antibiotics effectiveness. So if you do have to take it, take at least two hours before taking the supplements or four to six hours after you take the supplements. So if you separate it out, it can help to kind of help with the absorption and maximize the benefits of the medication. We have copper next on the list. It's an essential trace mineral. It's a catalytic agent which acts as an oxidase. And it's important like allergic reactions, serotonin, catecholamine degradation, and connective tissue development as well. Health benefits. Copper can help with anemia due to copper deficiency. Zinc induce copper deficiency. Wound healing, infectious diarrhea, lupus there's actually insufficient data for acne osteoporosis and dental plaque side effects stomach upset or abdominal pain cramps nausea diarrhea and vomiting as for drug interaction this is interesting because the acidity of vitamin c may convert copper in the gut into a less absorbable form the next one, a lot of you might have questions about birth control. So it's really a minor effect, I have to tell you. Copper levels increased in women using contraceptive drugs. And copper actually has chelating properties. What does that mean? It can chelate and kind of bind with, let's say, penicillamine and it can decrease the absorption due to that kind of combination. And then make sure, again, separate the dose at least two hours. And like I say, zinc can competitively decrease the absorption of copper. Manganese. I always thought that was an interesting name. Okay, so it's a cofactor in enzymatic and metabolic reactions is involved in like amino acid, cholesterol, carbohydrate metabolism. And men actually seem to absorb less manganese than women for some reason. You can help with osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, microcytic anemia, weight loss, premenstrual syndrome or PMS. Now it's generally well tolerated Unless you have like chronic liver disease, it can lead to accumulation and potential toxicity inside your body. But other than that, it's well tolerated. As far as drug interactions. Now, calcium or iron can naturally decrease manganese absorption. Zinc can increase manganese absorption. As far as antipsychotic drugs, it can help 
cause like hallucinations, maybe some behavioral changes um, have been reported for a patient actually with a liver disease, one of the case reports that I read. And it can reduce the absorption of quinolone antibiotics again. So with like Cipro, Levaquin, those are the antibiotics that you should watch out for. Or tetracycline antibiotics, that's in a different category as well. Okay, so the next one is catalase. Catalase is an enzyme, hence the name ACE, A-S-E at the end. It converts hydro, or I'm sorry, it converts hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. So basically it's an antioxidant. It has properties that can fight free radicals in your body. There's no really any kind of side effects or drug interactions documented. So that's a good thing. We have rosehip powder extract. Now it contains pectin, citric acid, malic acid, which can have laxative and diuretic activities. So it can help with osteoarthritis, colds, infectious disease, vitamin C deficiency, fever, and gastric spasm. Side effects, nausea, vomiting, heartburn, abdominal cramps, fatigue, flushing, headache, insomnia, sleepiness, or diarrhea. Due to vitamin C content in rose hip powder extract, it's actually, it actually says so on her website as well, it can increase the risk of side effects. So if you're thinking, well, vitamin C is already formula, in the formula, why do you really need to add rose hip to kind of elevate the vitamin C level. Why can't you just increase the dosage of the vitamin C in the formula itself? That I don't even know. Also, rosehip powder extract can increase aluminum absorption. So if you take it with rosehip extract, do two hours before or four hours after antacids or like medications that can help with heartburn over the counter. Sometimes those contain aluminum, so make sure you read the label. Rosehip powder extract can actually induce platelet aggregation. So it can reduce the effectiveness of, let's say, antiplatelets or anticoagulation medication. So like aspirin, colpidogrel, or plavix, warfarin, that's also another therapeutic index drug, or it's also known as Coumadin. So be, please be very careful if you're on warfarin, please, please check with your doctor or pharmacist again for the second time. Methyl sulfonyl methane, or also known as MSM. Now it's naturally occurring um, compound found in green plants. So it can help with like, let's say exercise induced muscle damage osteoarthritis, hemorrhoids, chronic pain, joint inflammation, wound healing, side effects in can cause nausea, diarrhea, bloating, headache, fatigue, insomnia, or difficult concentrating. There's not really any known drug interaction. Saw palmetto. Now this is the most debated ingredient on the list and it needs some clarification. So first off, let's, it has effects on the hormonal activity inside your body. It appears to be non-competitively, it inhibits the 5-alpha reductase type 1 and 2 to prevent conversions of testosterone to DHT, which is di hydrotestosterone. Of course, it can help with prostate, chronic pelvic pain, common cold, coughs, irritated mucous membrane, sore throat, asthma, migraine, cancer, bladder, or hair loss. But mostly it's used for, I've seen it in the pharmacy, um, a lot of men use it for prostate reasons. 
for side effects. It can cause nausea, vomiting, dizziness, constipation, or diarrhea. And then in reported clinical trials, actually some have experienced like loss of libido, which is like sex drive, and ejaculation disorder. For bleeding risk, that's one of the main drug interaction with sal palmetto. It can increase your chance of bleeding. So usually before surgery, doctors would ask you to stop this supplement for at least a week, five to seven days or so. If you're already taking like, so let's say aspirin, clopidogrel, Plavix, again, warfarin, those can actually have problems. And of course, any kind of ANSAIDs over the counter, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen or Advil or Diclovenac, Voltaren or Motrin. The next category is anti-estrogenic effects with self meadow. So in theory, it can, yes, it can interfere with contraceptive drugs doesn't mean necessarily mean that you're automatically gonna get pregnant but to what extent does it affect your birth control we don't know you can't just jump to conclusion and then say so palmetto causes you to be pregnant that's not the case at all let me clarify let's say Francis gave Mich Michelle an orange right and Michelle here gave Kelly that same orange. Does that mean that Francis give Kelly the orange? Does it work that way? No, y you can't say that Francis gave Kelly the orange because that's not what happened. I hope you understand that concept. Salt palmetto causes your birth controls to be less effective. Therefore, there could be, could be the chance that you can get pregnant. Be but it's not fair to say that salt palmetto automatically gonna cause you to be pregnant. All right, I hope that clarifies some things. Emblica officinalis, aka Indian gooseberry. It has antimicrobial, anti mutagenic, and antioxidant activity. Also, it has anti-inflammatory properties as well. It helps to lower your cholesterol, diabetes, it can work for obesity, pancreatitis, cancer, dyspepsia, eye problem, diarrhea, joint pain, and osteoarthritis. Good news, none side, or there are no side effects reported. Again, it can inhibit platelet aggregation, the so bleeding risk with antiplatelets and anticoagulants like aspirin, warfarin, and with copper and iron, it chelates so it can decrease the absorption of copper and also it can lower the blood glucose level. If you're on anti-diabetic medications like glomipiride, glyburide, metformin, Actos, Avandia, of course, watch out for that as well. Grape seed extract. Now, did you know that red grapes actually have more antioxidant properties than white grapes do? I didn't know until recently. It has vasodilating, anti-lipoperoxidant activity, and anti-platelet properties. So overall, for health benefits, it can decrease cardiovascular risk, diabetes complications such as neuropathy or retinopathy. It can improve wound healing anti-aging skin, age-related macular degeneration, so with your eyes, prevention of collagen breakdown. As for side effects, it can cause, like, let's say, headache, abdominal pain, sore throat, nausea, and cough. There's a whole list of drug interactions, so I hope you're ready for this. For lactulose bacillus, it inhibits the growth of this bacteria, which is like a good bacteria inside your gut. Usually um, you see it with like probiotic formulas. It prevents the colonization in the GI tract. So basically your stomach. 
Next is vitamin C. There's evidence that hypertension um, patients who take up to like 500 milligram of vitamin C plus grape seed extract of like let's say a, a thousand milligram per day can have significant increase in blood pressure. So with also it can cause like bleeding risk because of the antiplatelet properties. And with warfarin, aspirin, plavix, um, and the last portion of it is it inhibits the cytochrome P452D6. I know that's a very long name for an enzyme. The enzyme itself can increase the levels of the drugs inside your body. So the drug metabolized by um, cytochrome 2D6 substrates like with Elevil, with Flecani, Furoxetine, or Prozac, Demerol, Methadone, Metoprolol, or Lopressors, or Toprol XL, Olanzapine, or Zyprexa, Ondansetron, or Zofran, Tramadol, and Trazodone. That can mess with the metabolism of those certain categories for the drug because they have that enzyme. seed powder. It's a fatty oil. It has protein, carbohydrate content. It contains vitamin E, so it has also diuretic effects which can relieve like bladder discomfort. So overall you can use it for prostate, bladder irrit irritation, or treating intestinal worms. No significant side effects that we know of. And for drug interaction, with lithium, it can reduce the excretion and increase the level of lithium inside your bloodstream. Next one is Ceramide RX. Oh boy, this is what she say one of the most expensive ingredients on the list. It's for skincare, anti-aging properties with like wrinkles and texture of your skin. Of course, it's trademarked, so that's why it's relatively expensive ingredient to begin with. Although it doesn't have any side effects and no drug interactions that we know of. Horsetail. It contains trace amount of nicotine, actually. It has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. It vaso, it's a vasorelaxant and has analgesic effects as well. It can help with edema, kidney stones or bladder stones as well, urinary tract infection, incontinence, hair growth, brittle fingernails, and gout. There's not really any no noticeable side effects. Now crude horsetail contains thiaminase which I mentioned before, it's an enzyme that breaks down thiamine itself. So it can, over a long extended period of time, especially with prolonged consumption, it can lead to thiamine deficiency. So why would you put that in the same formula as thiamine? Like I mentioned before, this formula has thiamine and now has horsetail too. Let me try to kind of understand the logic behind this. So I guess it makes sense because if I can kind of see where she's going with this because if horsetail depletes thiamine then you know it makes sense to add thiamine back so it, it doesn't cause deficiency. But in a sense like you should you should really wait because for an example like you you take horsetail first and you wait for that reaction to do what it's supposed to and then hours later you can take back thiamine as a supplement to kind of replenish what you lost what got destroyed that makes sense but at the same time like if you put it in the same formula so let's say horsetail thiamine like who knows like to to what extent does the horsetail destroy the thiamine like it can completely destroy it or it can leave some left like we don't know so it's best not to have that combination in the same pill does that make sense 
And I know supplements are not regulated the same way as prescription medications are. Of course I know that. And sometimes you kind of wonder, like, you know, who can you trust to kind of walk you through the science and like all the, this drug interaction? That's okay, because I got your back and that's why I did all the research and I think it's important for you to know all these things that can occur. And I'm a pharmacist. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to educate you before you decide to take anything that can affect your body. Enough of that. <laughs> Horse tail can also lower your blood glucose levels. So it can increase the, um, the risk of hypoglycemia, so your blood sugar, with the diabetic population. Um, of course, you have to watch out and check your sugar. Also, horsetail can kind of increase the risk for hypokalemia, which is basically depleting your potassium with like hydrochlorothiazide, furosemide, or LASIK medication. So also watch out for those. Asta Sanfin. So it's a reddish car carotenoid pigment found in mycoalgae. Yes, it's true that it's a very powerful antioxidant. On her website, it also says so. So it can help with age-related degeneration, uh, macular degeneration, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, stroke, cancer, me metabolic syndrome, um, reduces the oxidative stress inside your body, exercise induced muscle damage, carpal tunnel syndrome, dyspepsia, male infertility, symptoms of menopause, and rheumatoid arthritis. None is reported for side effects. And then for the drug interaction, it can lower the plasma levels reduce, and reduce the effectiveness of drugs metabolized, again, with the enzyme, um, cytochrome 450. But this time, it's the 3A4 substrate. So it's a little bit different in category. Interact with, let's say, amiodarone or cordarone. That's a dirty drug, remember that. Citalopram or Celexa. Lansoprazole or Prevacid. Ondansetron, Zofran, Prednisone, Sertraline, or Zoloft. L-glutathione. Primarily, it's synthesized in the liver, involved in like DNA synthesis and repair, protein and prostaglandin synthesis as well, amino acid transport, metabolisms of like toxins and carcinogens. It helps um, with the immune system function and prevents the oxidative cell damage and enzyme activation inside your body. Help with chemotherapy, toxicity, cataracts, glaucoma, prevent aging, asthma, cancer, heart disease, liver disease, memory loss, osteoarthritis, and Parkinson. None is reported for side effects. Now as for drug interaction, it can interact with acetaminophen or Tylenol, which can decrease the overall therapeutic effect of Glutathium. Yay, the last one, finally. Alpha lipoic acid, aka ALA. It's an endogenous cofactor in eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. It has an important role in energy production, like it's lipophilic, and it also has antioxidant properties. It can help with, like, let's say, it prevents cancer. It can help with diabetes or diabetic um, neuropathies, like with HIV and AIDS patient, with liver disease, and also mild weight loss. Now, side effects. It can cause hypoglycemia, which means it can lower your blood sugar. And with that, of course, you need to have a little bit of a dose adjustment with your anti-diabetic medications. And in theory, for drug interactions, it can decrease the effectiveness of chemotherapy drugs. And also, it can decrease the effects of thyroid hormone, like um, 
also with levothyroxine or Synthroid if you're taking a thyroid medication. At the beginning of the video, I promised you that I would tell you what kind of interactions or what kind of questionable combinations with all the 21 ingredients that's listed in this supplement. So there are four different combinations that I think is questionable. So first of all is the vitamin C with the glutathione because it can decrease the overall effectiveness of the um, vitamin C itself. And then horsetail and vitamin B1 which is thiamine like we mentioned before. Horsetail can actually has the enzyme to destroy the thiamine. Myeltin and alpha lipoic acid because that can competitively inhibit each other when it comes to absorption. Last combination is Emblica with copper because that also can chelate and lower the absorption of copper. All the information that we just discussed, like I mentioned, I got it from a comprehensive database with all the documented, like if there's any kind of side effects or of health benefits, but also take it with a grain of salt because even though it's documented, maybe the trial is not big enough, the sample size is not big enough, or there needs to be more monitoring or kind of evidence to really prove that this is the case. And recently I heard something with the issues of the um, supplement, the Halo Beauty supplement with confusing labeling um, there's something about let's say day supply like on in the front of her bottle it say 60 capsules but on the back the serving size it should be 30 instead of 60 because you're supposed to take two capsules a day and that's also another thing that's kind of I like I really want clarifications on this because nowhere on the bottle does it say take two capsules a day or is it take one capsule twice daily so that's like the direction is a big thing in the pharmacy world like nowhere in the bottle or in the back of the bottle does it say how many to take and let's say a, a patient or a person a consumer like what if they don't watch your videos on YouTube and they just buy this product and like how are they supposed to know how many to take? Like taking two pills at one time versus separating taking one pill in the morning and then another one in the afternoon. Those are two completely different things because it depends on the half-life and you know all that boring stuff in pharmacy that I've learned about. So taking bottom line is taking two pills at once or taking it twice a day, that's not the same thing. There needs to be clarification on the directions. Now, as a pharmacist, that's totally unacceptable in my book because if that happens in the pharmacy world, there's no way that you can dispense that supplement or medication to a patient. They shouldn't, cut, like you, you cannot dispense that to a patient without the patient knowing exactly what they should take. And it's all because of patient safety. As the person, as a consumer, I would not take this supplement, to be honest with you. I mean, it's scary to think about because you're putting essentially 21 different ingredients, like a foreign substance inside your body. And with every single day, not to mention that you might be already taking other medications or if you have like other pre-existing conditions to begin with. It's always better to go after a targeted concern as opposed to uh, like just taking more is better. That's not the concept here at all. Because let's say if you only want hair benefits, then only after certain supplements like biotin that can help with that instead of taking 21 or 20 other ingredients that you might not need at all. And not everyone would experience the same kind of side effects, you know, because your body reacts differently to basically the same substance. So some people might experience headache, another person might experience nausea and vomiting and stomach issues. It depends. 
And I also want to let you know that pharmacists know a great deal about drug interactions. Not just me, but other pharmacists in like other settings as well, like in the hospital, in the retail community where you pick up your medications, in managed care, research or academia settings as well. So next time you see a pharmacist, please tell them that I sent you and just tell them how much you appreciate all the things that they do for you or their work and what they can educate you on. And I can speak on behalf of most of the pharmacists out there that we really do have your best interests at heart and we really do care and we put patient safety as the top priority and that's what we care about the most. And you know, talk to your pharmacist or your doctor, like I mentioned, and making sure there's no interactions if you still really do want to try the supplement. I don't blame you. You're curious. If it's going to help your health, that's okay. But just make sure you clarify that before you take anything, before you introduce any kind of substance into your body. Hopefully with all the materials presented and all the information that I provide you today, you can walk away and apply it to other areas of your life, not just the Halo Beauty Booster, but maybe other potential supplements that's also on the market. Um, and I hope you take away something and learn and apply it effectively. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up so I know to continue making videos just like this. Bye-bye.